In this video, I'm going to show how to add a button to a recycler view. This is one of the tips that I mentioned in a previous video about how to make a simpler Android app by consolidating items into one or two screens instead of having 12 different screens. Remember that a recycler view is one of these things where it typically is showing a list of something in a graphical format many times. It might be a picture or some text or something like that. But the important part is it is a list of repeating items. And what we want to do in this video is add a button that acts on each one of those items individually when it's pressed. We'll start with this application that I've been building in a series of videos. And the recycler view that we're using is this recycler view down at the bottom, which shows a series of events that have happened to a specimen of a plant. Recycler views are complicated, so let's just go over an overview animation that I showed in a previous video where I was talking about what recycler views are. First, let's take a look at the bottom right, and you see that there's a list. Think of an array list or some type of collection of Java or Kotlin DTOs. And in our case, it's Kotlin, so it'll be Kotlin data classes. These are events, in our case, that correspond to a specimen. In other words, watering a plant, fertilizing a plant, pruning a plant. Each of these could be an event that happens to the plant. So the list is just a collection of DTOs. Now over on the left side, we have the user interface that the user will see. And we have the recycler view here, which is making this list visible to the user. In Android, we need something that acts as a bridge between this collection under the covers of DTOs and the user interface that the user will see. And that is an adapter. Now, recycler views are special because it's showing each one of these items in this recycler view. So the adapter needs something to help it. It's going to create something called a view holder. And the view holder is going to deal with one of these items in the collection at a time. And it is going to associate it with a single row in the recycler view. That single row is going to be something called a row layout. And a row layout is any kind of layout that we could use in Android. Think of like a, a constraint view or something like that. It's just a normal layout. So the adapter says, OK, this is the list item that I want to render. It passes it to the view holder. And then the view holder renders the row layout from that item. And then our recycler view is populated with this data. So what are the steps that we need to do? First of all, a button will typically invoke a method. So we need to create a method that the button will invoke. Next, let's think of the button that we want to put on our recycler view. I strongly recommend using an image button in this case because number one, the Android design guideline, pictures are faster than words. Number two, image buttons take up a lot less space than a traditional button that has text on it. And when you're dealing with the recycler view, your real estate is very limited. So we're going to need to create an image for the button, and then we're going to need to create the button. After that, we need to update the view holder with the action or the on-click listener that we want that button to do. And in our case, it is going to be a delete of a specific item on that recycler view. That's the important part. Not only do you want to put a button on the recycler view, but you want that button to take action on the specific item that's being rendered in that specific row layout where the button exists. And I'll show you how to do that. Once we have all that done, we can wire up the button to the method that we created that we want the button to invoke. In other words, we've created a button. Now let's wire it up to this method that we created in step one. So with that, let's jump right in and get to work. First, let's create the method that we want our button to invoke. Now in the back end, I'm using Firebase, but that's really unrelated to having a button on a recycler view. And I have some other videos that describe Firebase, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on this. But I will simply go into my view model class, and I'm going to duplicate the save method or save function if you prefer that I created earlier, and I'm going to rename it to delete. Just a couple other tweaks beyond that. Let's make sure that we actually have an event ID, because if not, we're not going to have anything to delete. So put an if test around this. I should probably also put an else part, but right now we'll just worry about the if. And since we're not adding, I'm going to change this call up here to access the document directly, and we'll pass to that the event ID. Now you see, once I have the document, 
I can issue a delete on it straight to Firebase, and then I have my normal on success listener and on fa failure listener. Let me add a couple log statements to that. Log statements are always important. In this case, it will also give us a point where we can snap a breakpoint if we want to verify the delete happened. But here again, if this syntax doesn't make sense, if you've not seen Firebase before, don't worry. Just think of this as some method that we want to call. And now we can move on to the next step. Create an image for the button. In my project, I go to Res Drawable, and then I simply say New Image Asset. It's really easy to create a delete button with the clip art that's provided to us. So let's start by changing this to action bar and tab icons, and then we'll simply call it IC underscore delete. Clip art, this is the important part, and one thing I really like about Android Studio is the library of clip art that it gives us because it's really consistent. So delete, delete forever. Let's go ahead and say delete forever. And I'm going to change the color to one that fits with the rest of my buttons that I put in earlier. And finish. Next step, update the layout with the button. I created this recycler view in a prior video, so I just want to confirm that when I'm creating the adapter, which I showed in that animation, I'm using something called row layout. So we take a look here. There's my uh, row layout that we're using. So now I'm going to go to my layouts, and I'm going to look for this row layout. Again, just a normal Android layout like you'd see in any other kind of layout. This one's fairly simple because it has an image view and a text view. So let's add this image button. It's a bit easier to visualize in design view. Buttons, image button, and I'm simply going to drag and drop to the right. And notice that it gives me an option here to choose which image I want to put in it. So we're going to choose the delete button. Now, one trick is that this is a linear layout, so it's going to take my image view, my text, and my button, and it's come all the same size. Probably better to make this a constraint layout so that we can make them all different sizes, but nonetheless, you get the idea. So first thing that we want to do is give this a more meaningful name. Let's call it btn delete event. That way we'll remember what to call this when we're invoking it in the code in the view holder behind the scenes. Now, a quick checkpoint on where we are. I've run this in the emulator, and you see that, sure enough, the button exists on each of the rows of our recycler views. I can press it now, and nothing happens, so that takes us to our next step. Update the view holder with the action you'd like to perform with the button. This is more straightforward than it sounds. Remember that the view holder's job is to take each item from the collection and marry it up to that row layout that we just changed. So to make the button do something we need to access the button and we're actually already doing several similar things that i did in a previous video you notice that we're getting access to the image view that's on that row layout we're getting access to the text view that shows the text of the event so now all we need to do is get access to the button that we've created just like so we do our find view by id just as we've done above and then we store it into a variable now in our update event, remember that this function is going to get called each time the recycler view wants to render a row layout. And what's getting passed to it? That event DTO or event data class that we want to render. So from here, all we do is say btn delete event, set on click listener, and we use a little kind of Kotlin lambda to help us do this quickly and efficiently. And then we can say delete event, and pass in the event that we want to delete. One little stipulation here, we have to call from this button handler out to that view model where I put the delete function a few moments ago. And this is an inner class, so it doesn't know who the view model is. So this delete event function is a new function that I'm going to make, but I'm going to make it in the enclosing class called diary fragment and not in this inner class called event view holder. So you notice it's coming up red. That's because I've not created the function yet. Watch closely as I hold alt, press enter, and it says, okay, create function. And this is the important part. Note the dialog here. It's saying, okay, do you want to create the function in this event view, view holder inner class or in the dialog, diary fragment? Well, I want to create it in the enclosing class called the diary fragment because the diary fragment has access to that view model. Take a look up at the top of the diary fragment. This is something I refactored up from 
a subclass, but nonetheless, you see, we have our view model defined here, and then we are instantiating the view model and the on activity created. But notice that's an attribute of the diary fragment enclosing class. And with that, we're now working on the final step. Wire up the button to the method you want to call. So the button click handler, delete event, comes down to this delete event function in the enclosing class, and from here we can say view model dot delete. Now here's the important part. Notice what's getting passed in. This single event that was rendered by our view holder as it was rendering each of those DTOs for the recycler view. So now we can delete that very specific event without impacting the other events. Let's have a couple breakpoints and see what happens. We'll use our Austrian Pine example here, and let me show you what it looks like in Firebase. In Firebase, we have our specimen collection, and then the first item is our Austrian Pine. Then I can click on events, and here you see four events, just like the four events that you see on the emulator. I've set several breakpoints that we can step through this. So let's start by deleting the high nitrogen event, and let's just confirm which one that is. That's this one that is ORK, WN, so on and so forth. That's the one that we wish to delete. So I press the delete button, and notice that it is calling on this on click listener that we, that we created earlier. And sure enough, you see this event fertilizer, two cups high nitrogen, and you see that ID as well. And I'm going to choose F7. F7 takes us from that button click handler to the delete event function that we created in the grander enclosing class called Diary Fragment. Now I press F7 from here, and F7 will step us into the delete method on this view model that we made at the very start of this video. So F8, now we do the delete. We, well, we first we capture the document, and then we do the delete. And then this is essentially an asynchronous call with a callback. So I press F9. And in just a moment, we see that the on success listener has fired. I press F9 again to allow it to resume. Let's take a look at Firebase, and you see that in Firebase, it has lost one of those events. Not all the events, but the specific event that we wanted to delete. Now, I also set up this application to listen to changes to those events and then update the recycler view when those events change. So you see that automatically it has removed that item from the view. As a matter of fact, if you want to see that in real time, I'll simply turn off my breakpoints and watch this. Let's delete this one that isn't adding a lot of value because there's nothing in it. I press delete and it's gone. If you're curious that update the recycler view, I did in a previous video, but I'll just show that really quickly. You see here in our fragment, we have viewmodel.events.observe, and this is a view model that's set up for live data. And so when it observes a change in the events, it simply resets the collection of events, and then it notifies data set changed on the recycler view, which I'm calling RCY events for specimens. So that part's a bit over and above because that's using live data, and maybe all you wanted to do was add a delete button. But nonetheless, I wanted to show you how that works in real time. So in this video, we've seen how to add a button to a recycler view with Android and Kotlin. This is a really nice way to consolidate screens on your application so that you don't have a separate screen where you delete things. You can do it all in one screen, which really simplifies your application, which makes it easier for a user to use and also makes it easier for you to program because you have fewer screens you have to write and then maintain. As always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.